Hey everybody and welcome back again. My name is Keith Gavart with LearnTechTraining.com and today we are going to create something awesome. Okay, we're going to learn how to do some blocky programming and the best part about this is we're going to do it within Cisco's Packet Tracer. It's an awesome application here. It provides us with these features that we can leverage to continue our continued education, if you will. One disclaimer, I'm not a programmer. I know enough programming um, to get by with what I need it for in my job. So that's one common question I get all the time is, do you need to know programming as a network engineer? The short answer is no, but the long answer is it is extremely beneficial. There are many times that you will get into networking and as an engineer, you could write scripts using various Python or Tickle and it automates your network processes. Or for example, if you need to do a failover on a remote site where it's gonna wipe out the entire device, and you need to be able to get back into it without driving, you know, 20 hours away to your other remote location. Well, you could run a script that when that device reboots, it at least re-implements some of the base configurations. Then you're able to remote back into that device and then configure whatever else you need to. So there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of very practical situations that programming as a network engineer come into excellent hands. Okay. But. I'm not, a com I'm not a computer programmer by any means. In fact, I want to introduce you guys to a great friend of mine. He's an old college professor of mine from Penn State University. His name is Fred Abley. Mr. Mr. Fred is what he goes by. And he's got an awesome YouTube channel. Check it out below. It's called Get Me Coding. And his website is on the screen. It's called GetMeCoding.com. And he goes through a whole bunch of awesome tutorials and awesome lectures and classes that you could leverage to help learn coding. But, all right, Keith, what is this What is this blocky programming? Everyone's talking about it. It seems to be the new fad. Well, let's take a look. You're looking at it. It looks like Legos. <laughs> it's that simple. The nice thing about this is, is it just snaps together. I could take any of these variables out, okay? So if I want to take the zero, I, maybe I want to put him here. That would not make any sense. But I could put this guy here. You know, I could throw this guy in right there. It just meshes together. But the problem is, is this is not going to work. You still have to follow the logical order of what programs are designed for. You have to follow the design, logical design order of a programming language for it to make sense and work. So, you know, now that I pull this out, I could just grab him or let's pull him off, pull him back up. Let's put him back over here. We need our zero back over here, right? So you can see how easy this is and it just all snaps together. And once you start learning some of these foundations and how this is actually communicating to our control board and making the devices do what we want them to do, oh, you can't, it's irreplaceable knowledge, guys. My 12-year-old nephew is learning this in school. I wish when I was 12 years old, I had these, this option because this is tremendously awesome. Learning programming is not an easy task, right? Like I know programming, I know it somewhat well, but uh, you know, it's just, it's mm, phenomenal. So highly, highly recommend you guys check out Fred Abley's channel. His channel's name is in the description below. It's Get Me Coding, and his website is getmecoding.com, and he'll walk you guys through this a lot more. So what we're gonna do, my thought process behind this lab was, you know, you have a motion door or a door that opens controlled by motion. And at the same time, when you walk into a building or maybe like a data center or in, in this example, I have vault the door, the lights are off, you know, to be economical and save resources. But when the detects motion, the door's opening, the light's going to go on and our indicator light's going to say, okay, well, it's not closed anymore, which is our, my default will be red. When it opens, change this to green. So that's what we're gonna create. But I also took it a step further since we, if you didn't check it out, SMTP server configurations above in the link, since we just learned how to do that together a few days ago in the last video, we're gonna incorporate that into this too. So when someone goes through this door, we are emailed through a notification. It's pretty cool stuff. So this, this uh, little tutorial might be two or three parts, depending how long it takes. I do wanna go over the programming in a little bit more detail so you guys have a better understanding of it. And then you can take that knowledge, learn from it and grow from it, right? Remember, that's my famous motto. You learn by doing. Take this knowledge, leverage it, and it's only gonna benefit you down the road. So to get started, let's actually watch this work in action. So you know, here's the code. It's not running right now. If I click run, you can see starting new project is switched it to closed. My LED is red. I want to put a little bit, of, let me move this over. I want to put a little bit of motion in front of my uh, motion detector here. And as you can see, the door opens, the light turns on, and my LED indicator went green. Furthermore, you know, the very juicy part is if I go into email, 
I have an email stating, hey, vault door was open. This is a notification indicating that the vault door has been open. Pretty cool stuff, guys. So without any further ado, let's get going. What I need you guys to do is open up a blank Cisco Packet Tracer lab environment. So for the first section here, we just wanna actually build our topology. So we're just gonna drop in a server. We're also gonna go over here to grab a, actually while we're here, we could grab a laptop or desktop. It really doesn't matter. And then we could go back. We're gonna grab a 2960 switch or whatever switch you want. It's gonna be unmanaged, so we don't need to worry about configuring it or anything. We're gonna grab an SBC board. Now, what I need you to do is click the SBC board, go to physical, grab, if I zoom in here, you're gonna see there's a little spot here, right, for a module. We're gonna grab the one CFE module, which gives us an ethernet card. Now we could go ahead and close this out. We should cable our devices right now. So I'm just gonna run some ethernet cables to the switch. Again, it does not matter which port on the switch you plug these into because we are not doing any configurations on the switch. It's gonna be an unmanaged switch. And then again, just plug it right into your SBC board. Now, I'm gonna just visually name these again as a visual reference later on. It helps us out a little bit. He's gonna be 1.3.3.3. Yes, I know this is not a standardized IP addressing scheme, but it's a lab and it just makes life easy. And for server two, he's gonna just be 1.1.1.1. Beautiful. Now we should go a step further and go into desktop into our NICs on here and IP addresses. The laptop is 1.2.2.2. Tab that out for the gateway mask, or I'm sorry, the subnet mask. Close him out. Let's go to the server. Same thing, desktop, IP configuration, 1.1.1.1, tab him out for your mask. And then our SBC board here, we could click, go to desktop, and I'm sorry, we gotta go to config on the control board. We're gonna go down to fast ethernet adapter here. IP address will be 1.3.3.3, tab him out, and all is good. Now, first things first, let's start pulling in our IoT devices, right? So let's go down to our board. We need to hit actuators. We're gonna bring in the RGB LED and you can notice, notice, notice that, <laughs> can't speak today. Notice that at the bottom in the middle center of your screen says RGB LED, just drag that baby up. You can put these wherever you want, but try to follow the pin layouts I use. That way it makes sense when we're actually doing these. So the other thing we need to do is click the sensors and we're gonna grab this guy right here. It says motion sensor. I'll just put that right about there. We could go back to our um, and the devices, we're gonna click on the little home icon and we're gonna grab a door. And again, it does not matter with placement. In fact, sometimes it's, it makes it a little neater on the screen if you separate them a little bit better. So I'm just gonna name these devices, okay? It doesn't really have any impact on what we're doing in this tutorial, but it just helps visually represent them so it's easier on us later on. I'm gonna name this door indicator. And obviously, we this is just a light. I'm just gonna say motion lights. And you know, I'm mostly doing this with you, so when you start practicing on your own, you could you know, kind of just have an understanding of what I was going for with this. So this is gonna be um, eh, motion door, whatever. Motion door, and obviously this is our motion sensor. We really don't need to put anything there, but that's our motion sensor. So now we need to connect these devices to our board. Now here's where you do wanna pay attention to the pinouts just so you're following along with my pinouts and it starts making more sense. We're gonna grab the IoT custom cable and go from D0 to D0 on the motion sensor. And then again, we're gonna to go to uh, D2 to, um, let's do A0. And then we're also gonna go from D3, I completely skipped D1, that's okay. We'll go to D3 to A1 Go back here, we're gonna connect from D1 to the door, to D0, and then we're also gonna go ahead and do D4 from the controller to D0 on the light. All right, guys, so right now at its most basic, everything is gonna be working for us. However, I mean, everything's connected and will work once we start programming it. So let's just explore this a little bit. When I click on this device, the controller board, all I'm gonna do is go to programming, click new, and you're gonna notice we can name this whatever we want. We could say Blockly Lab, okay? And then the template, we have JavaScript, we do have Python, and we have Visual. Now Visual is just because it's a visual programming language, if you will. I mean, in this, it's working off of JavaScript, but you get the idea. But it is known as Blocky. That's the terminology flowing out there. There's a paradigm of it going on, and again, Fred Abley, getmecoding.com, check him out. Subscribe, tell him I sent you. 
So here we're gonna click empty visual and click create. So this will indeed create our programming area where we're gonna create this program. Now a few other things to notice is for each of these devices, and this goes for any of the IoT devices within Cisco Packet Tracer, we can click on these and it's gonna give us some direction on what to do. So for example, we have to use an API of analog write to be able to adjust this color. You have three different pinouts. That's why I told you it's important to follow the pinouts. In fact, let me turn those on. Preferences, I always show ports. And you can see A0 to D2, which is gonna be for red, A1 to D3, which will be green. So just some indications that where you can find some of this information. And you can see the total on value is zero through one to two, 1023. This means these RGB lights within Packet Tracer could actually work off of a dimmer switch if you programmed it to do so. It's, ah, it's so cool. The, the, what we can do within Packet Tracer nowadays, the, leverage this to you know learn is absolutely phenomenal. So that's some cool features you could do with that. And then obviously every other device is gonna say, okay, so this one's using the custom write API and then we have zero for off, one is gonna be a dim delight, and two will be completely on. So that's where I'm getting some of that information from. In the next part, we're gonna dive in and get right into blocky programming. I'll see you there.